What is going on YouTube? I am Germ here in this video today. We're going to be talking about what I think is some pretty good or at least some potentially good news for Team Liquid, but this can also be uh, some good news for some other teams, some other players. I mean, this really has a, uh, a potentially big impact on the whole landscape of the LCS, a lot of different teams. Um, and, and what we're talking about in this video today is the fact that the Proving Grounds tournament just uh, ended. You know, we had the Proving Ground final we had 100 thieves academy and we had team liquid academy um they had a, a really a banger of a series went all the way to game five game five was pretty close a lot of big moments big plays uh being made by both teams by a lot of players um some people really stepping up some people maybe not so much but a lot of players overall added to their stock and to their value and not that i'm the biggest fan of academy or the biggest fan of proving grounds or whatever but there are some of these guys that are going to be future lcs players and hopefully at least some of them that are going to be future LCS, um, you know, stars or at least really good LCS players. Um, and I have a lot of different thoughts and opinions and a, and a lot of different takes here that I've been wanting to talk about. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Definitely drop a like if you guys do enjoy this video. I would appreciate that so, so much. Uh, subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content. Help us run those numbers up. And consider checking out the Patreon. First link in the description below. It's an awesome way for you guys to help support my channel and my content. My ultimate goal is to go full time. So helping us get closer to that. And in return, you're going to get access to all my videos pretty much early before they actually go live on YouTube. With that being said, let's get right into this. So... Uh, Academy, really, really interesting. Um, you know how there are definitely some good organizations in the LCS right now and definitely, uh, you know, some not so great organizations. Now, some teams have good LCS teams, bad Academy teams. Some have, um, you know, bad Academy teams, good LCS teams. Uh, I don't know if I said the same thing there or not, but you know what I'm saying? Some, <laughs> there's... Sometimes your LCS team and your academy team are run differently. Sometimes they're the same. You know, TL obviously is a good LCS team and their academy team was in the finals. 100 Thieves, good LCS team, good academy team. That makes me think that those organizations are pretty well run, but obviously they also are spending money on players for both their LCS and academy, uh, coaches, uh, you know, infrastructure, all that. It's definitely helping out the players. But then it's kind of funny how, you know, like last year you had a team like CLG with a bad LCS and Academy team. This year you have TSM with a bad LCS and bad Academy team. Um, and that's just not a great look for your organization. It's not a great look for the near term or the, you know, development in the future, anything like that. But um, yeah, cool for Team Liquid and 100 Thieves that they're both still alive in the LCS playoffs and we're playing in the Proving Grounds final, the Academy final, Academy and amateur coming together, whatever. And when we take a look at how these games went, um, again, like I said, banger series, I believe viewership got up to 30,000 viewers, which that's insane. I mean, there was some weeks of the LCS, I want to say we were, what, barely getting 100K? And for Academy to have 30? I mean, that's crazy. It really shows you kind of how far, um, you know, Academy stuff has come and, and how really hyped up this series was. So, uh, you know, in game one, kind of a stomp for Team Liquid Academy. Um, some of the big names here, obviously, our Mayo is a guy we've seen in the LCS a couple times before. I don't really think he's that exciting of a guy, like, coming back to the LCS. But, the two guys to watch out for TL Academy are in the bot lane, obviously Jan and Ayla, both guys we've seen in the LCS slash uh, in the preseason tournament this year as they were subbing in for Core JJ and Han Sama. We all know kind of how good they are or can be or whatever. Uh, and then over on the 100 Thieves Academy side, Kenvi has been a very, very highly touted prospect um, for the last couple of years. And then Busio. Um, so both supports uh, and each team kind of has, you know, a couple guys that everyone thinks are more or less LCS ready, whether they're going to be great in the LCS or need to start developing in the LCS or whatever. But, you know, TLA um, hopped out to a big advantage in the series with an 18 to 2 victory. Um, then 100 Thieves bouncing back. Back, um, you know, with a, a game two win in 45 minutes, so kind of a longer game, but then TL Academy with another domination, a 20 to zero victory in 26 minutes. Uh, and then 100 Thieves, you know, they grind it back. They get a, a 15 and four game from their 80 carry, which is crazy. You know, Busio making some good plays in this one, one, five and 20. And then finally we come all the way to game five where Team Liquid Academy did end up winning it. And at the end of the day, I don't really care that much who wins. I don't think it matters at all. I know some people care a lot about who's winning these games and stuff, but 
it shouldn't matter. This is a developmental league. This is where the players should be trying to get better, not necessarily doing everything to win these games. Now, obviously, if you are just better than everyone and you're doing a lot of things right, you should be winning, but you should more be working on your weaknesses. You should more be working to become a better player, um, you know, overall to, to hopefully help an LCS team one day to showcase your own talents and skills. Whether your team win or loses shouldn't really matter that much at the end of the day. But the biggest stories from this whole thing, I don't know if they actually announced like a finals MVP or not, um, but you know, whatever they should have it. But everyone was talking about Ayla and just how amazing he did in the series, how amazing he did in Proving Grounds, uh, and how amazing he did with Team Liquid previously as well. And that kind of got me thinking that, hey, this is good news for Team Liquid. Ayla, um, yes, he was really, really great for Team Liquid when he got to play. But he was getting to play with Han Sama. He was getting to play with a stacked Team Liquid team. You know, everyone was like, hey, are they kind of covering him up? Are they making him look better than he is? Most, most people didn't think that was the case. You know, Ayla was really, really impressive. But then going back down to Academy, still continuing to be as impressive. The fact that this guy is a resident player in North America his value is going to be insane. And obviously, there's a lot of guys in in, in uh, kind of these uh, academy and amateur teams that have an insane amount of value. I mean, like I said, we have Jan and Ayla. We have Kenvi and Busio. Um, 100 Thieves still has Tenacity, who wasn't even playing in academy or amateur, just sitting there as a guy who could maybe get sold off. I know Chime was another guy uh, who had a very, very good season. You know, we have like three supports down in academy. That's crazy. Uh, and this is potentially really, really good news for all these teams if they can maybe hey call them up to their own LCS team and get them some playing time and, and hopefully they'll be like the future of their franchise or whatever or if they can sell them off and get a bunch of money but that is one of the things that I've kind of heard is a big you know I've heard some some rumors I've talked to some people you know I hear some things every once in a while um, it's kind of a big hiccup with this whole system right now is that these teams put these really really high price tags on a lot of these players um, now I don't know what that means I don't know you know, we've seen players go for as much as seven figures, but are we talking seven figures? Like for a guy like Tenacity or a guy like Ayla, they should be really valuable because, you know, they're young, they're inexperienced, they seem to have a lot of room to develop, but they also seem pretty good right now and they are residents. You know, top resident talent is, is hard to come by and that should have a high value. But um, yeah, are we talking seven figures? Are we talking high six figures? Are we talking low six figures? Um, so, I mean, we've seen the buyouts that like G2 got for some of their players. Um, we've heard the buyout that like Niski, um, you know, is going for right now. So it's hard to justify spending too much money on these players, but you also get it from the organization side, how they want so much money. So it just seems like this system is, is really, really tough. But I do absolutely hope that as many of these guys can get into the LCS as possible because the LCS needs as many talented players as possible to be in the league. One, to, you know, be good scrim partners and good practice partners to push the other players to be better. Like, it sucks if Ayla, if we believe Ayla is a top 10 support in the LCS, it sucks if he's stuck in academy. If we believe Tenacity is a top 10 top laner or can be a top 10 top laner, it sucks that he gets to play one game in spring split. You know, if Jan is going to be good, um, if Busio is really that good, if Chime is going to be that good, we need to get these guys into the LCS. Now, I get it. You know, Team Liquid, they want to uh, obviously make some money off this thing. Esports aren't super profitable right now. If you have a very, very valuable asset, you don't want to give it away for free. And I'm not saying that's what they should do, but I'm saying there needs to be a middle ground. It seems like the system is just really shitty right now it seems like the system is really really broken it feels bad for the players you know that a guy like Kenvi can have multiple good seasons in academy and still not be in the LCS that a guy like Tenacity still can't make his way to the LCS that Ayla maybe he finds a team for summer maybe he doesn't you know if we take a look at um, all the different LCS teams right now it's like hey he's not coming to Liquid he's not coming to 100 Thieves they have um, you know who he evil geniuses as Vulcan Golden Guardians like um, you know Ole was pretty good FlyQuest Aphromoo was good Dignitas Bio was decent CLG already has a young uh, support in Poom TSM has Shenny. like I could see Immortals having a support opening and honestly Cloud9, either Winsome or Isles have not been all that impressive. So it's like maybe we have two, um, you know, support positions open, but are Immortals going to go out and spend money and, and try and buy out a Busio or an Ayla or a Chime? Is Cloud9 going to do one of those things headed into Summer Split? Like, I don't know. I don't think so. But I do think that these players absolutely deserve those shots. So again, I think this is great news for a lot of these players to get to showcase their talents, showcase, um, you know, just how good they are and how potentially valuable they can be. I think it's awesome for the organizations that, hey, Team Liquid is doing an awesome job. They just win the uh, Proving Grounds finals. They're the number one team in the LCS. They're doing a lot of things right. 
But, uh, you know, at the same time, I do think we need to start getting these players up into the LCS and start developing them and see what they have. Now, there's always the other question of like, hey, some players just look really good when they're on a stack team. Some players look really good when they're in academy playing against, you know, worse players. And it doesn't work out in the LCS. And yes, that's going to happen. There is always that risk. I'm thinking about a guy like Jenkins last year. He got to play on Team Liquid, who is a very, very good team. And a lot of people thought he looked good. Now, I thought he was extremely overrated last year. I thought he looked okay. Never really thought he looked all that great. But so many people were hyping him up. Um, and then you see him go to CLG this year. And man, he looked pretty rough on CLG. You can tell that League of Legends is a team game and getting to play on a good team or against worse players can definitely make you look a lot better. So, you know, I have some of those. I, I wonder some of those things about guys like like Ayla, guys like Jan, who looked really good playing for Team Liquid at times this year. How good are they going to look on a, an Immortals? How good are they going to look on a CLG when they're not, um, you know, laning with Core JJ or Han Sama or having Bjergsen as their mid laner? You know, that's always a risk involved. And that's also why these teams don't necessarily, you know, maybe want to go pay these insanely big buyouts for some of these players. Um, but man, seeing Proving Grounds, seeing all this going on, it just gets me hyped up for these young players. And like, we know we need more resident talent in North America. We know we need to find, um, you know, the next like double lift that's going to burst onto the scene. Maybe it's Tenacity. Maybe it's Ayla. Maybe it's one of these other guys. But they have to get playing in the LCS. We need to get them up there to, you know, start making it happen. You know, think about guys like Danny and guy like, guys like Jojo Pune who burst onto the scene right now. If they were still in Academy, that would suck. It would be worse for Evil Genius. It'd be worse for the LCS. It'd be worse for all the other teams, all the other players. It'd be worse for the fans. We got to get these guys a chance. We got to get them rolling. I do think the system is a little bit broken right now. Um, but hey, it's cool to see Ayla dominate in Proving Grounds. And I hope he gets a shot in the LCS in summer. Um... But I just don't know how likely it is at this point. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Let me drop a like if you did enjoy it. I would appreciate it so, so much. A little bit of a different video today. Leave a comment down below. Let me know, um, you know, what you guys think about any of the Proving Grounds, any of the young players, any of the Academy teams. Who do you think should make it to the LCS next? What team? You know, anything that we talked about in today's video. Subscribe, save up to date, and all my latest content. I hope to catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.